most famous chords of all time. That's obviously from the James Bond theme, written by Monty Norman and John Barry. And I say that because Monty Norman was sued by John Barry, who, who was brought in to finish the film score for the 1962 release of Dr. No, starring Sean Connery. He actually lost the lawsuit, but then he said, if I didn't write it, why did they hire me to write the next 11 James Bond movie themes, right? Of course. So what is that chord? That's called E minor major nine. It's from the E melodic minor scale, which is one, two, flat three, four, five. It's natural six, major seven, root. Now I want to do a breakdown of the actual theme, but I wanted to talk about that chord because it has such a unique sound. And I associate it with film noir, which is why I'm shooting this in black and white. The piece famously begins with a modal chord progression based in E minor. It goes like this. So it starts with E minor, then E minor with a flat six, or you could call it C major over E, going to E minor with a natural six, back to the flat six, back to E minor. So it's kind of like E minor, then you have the Aeolian sound to Dorian to Aeolian back to E minor. And then the guitar theme enters. Let's check it out. thing about this theme that's really interesting is that it's actually a guitar feature with a big band which is really unusual for the time. The guitar was played by guitarist Vic Flick who was a friend of John Barry's. So once again lending credibility to the fact that it was actually John who wrote the theme. There are many different versions of this theme. In fact there's other orchestrations that John Barry did like this one with full orchestra. The orchestration we're going to be discussing today is mainly a big band and it features instruments like vibes, which were typical for that period of time with people like Lionel Hampton and Victor Feldman. And it has a guitar feature right here at the opening. You can hear the vibes. You can hear the bass drum bone doing the stabs. It sounds like there might be strings in here, but I don't really hear strings anywhere else in the entire arrangement. It's probably because of the recording when it was made, but it sounds like it's basically a big band here. To me, the soundtrack has almost a film noir quality to it because of the kind of chords that are used. Minor six chords, minor six nine, minor major seven or minor major nine, like the final chord in the opening theme here. And the film noir period really lasted from 1944 to 1954. So you have Orson Welles, Billy Wilder, uh, directors like that. But the sound of this has that darkness to it. Before we go on, I want to ask you to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed here and on my Rick Beato 2. Really is a big help in getting these guests for interviews. Thanks. Next, we have our main theme and its answer parts. Check it out. <laughs> answer. I'm pointing to where the answers are. So it starts out on E, uses the E flat to D, which is really the major seventh to the flat seventh of E minor. Or you could say it's E flat, right? And then has the lower neighbor tone that leads us up to the fifth. So, upper neighbor, lower neighbor. After the first line, then there's the answer part that comes right down from G, G, F sharp, E, right? And then, then, that goes to that uh, minor six, right? And then there's the B, and then the chromatic down from E in triplets. Check it out again. And 
And this time it goes. Does B and then the leading tone to finish the phrase. That leads us to the next phrase, which the trumpets take over. So it's the same theme, but up the octave in the altissimo of the trumpet. Now, this is really reminiscent of Cat Anderson or Mater Ferguson, big band of, of that era. Cat Anderson played with Duke Ellington. Um, the, uh, these players would play up in the altissimo. Now, if you take a typical trumpet sample from a sample library, Spitfire, East, West, whatever it is, it'll typically top out at a C. But this is going up to E flat, right? You know, it's hard to find trumpet players that can actually play up in this high register for a big band. I know that because I played in big bands for a long time and I conducted a big band for five years in my 20s. And it's hard to find guys that can play super clean up that high. Now, it's not unprecedented. You do have it in classical music. If you think about the um, Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 2, the piccolo trumpet part, where you have lines that are way up in this register. They'll... They'll be up there for long periods of time, and it's very difficult to play. But these big band parts are played on a B-flat trumpet up super high and has a really powerful sound when you have a great lead player that can play it. So this has the same answer parts. And then, again... Next, we have the B theme that you all know. Here it is, isolated. And then we hit the climax of this section with the James Bond figure that everyone knows. Now that is this, C sharp minor seven flat five, but it does it over a B, okay? So that's another one of those film noir chords, this, the half diminished chord, that C sharp. After those chord stabs, we go back to the intro theme. It plays through it a couple times, and then it comes up to the ending section. And then that last chord. So let's talk about what's going on there. So it starts out with a, and does the first figure that's E, G, E flat, D. Then it moves up to G and goes G, B, F sharp, F. And then it moves up to B. So the bass note of each moves up and an E minor triad. So the next one is B, D, B flat, A, and then, and then the last chord is the. If you want to learn more about these concepts, you should check out my Beato bundle, which has my music theory course, my ear training, my Quick Lessons Pro, and my beginner guitar course. You can find it in the description below. Leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching.